wouldn't it be fascinating to time travel, especially with photography, and look at a time when photography was new and cameras were exciting in putting the boundaries. I think it would be fascinating, as I said, to go to 1909 and see the launch of this little camera. And when I say small camera, I mean small camera because this is an ensign and it folds out. It's an ensign antenet. Um, I'm never sure how you precisely pronounce it, whether you say antenetta or uh, ensign net. Um, and this is an internet number two. If I was travelling back to 1909, I would be looking at the number one. And this is a fascinating camera. It was designed by Magnus Neal, who was a Swedish engineer, and it was produced by Hodgson's in London, Hodgson's Butcher um, Camera Company, who made or and promoted Enzyme cameras. Now, it unfolds on these metal sidebars, these struts, and it produces a bellows camera. Here we are. So, and it goes back. You take one of these struts and you just fold it like this, fold it like that, and it folds up beautifully. It was supposed to be similar to a cigarette case or a cigar case. And although Kodak obviously came out with the vest camera, um, which you could put in your vest, which was the word for t-shirt or top, right? So this would fit nicely in your top pocket. So you've got a completely portable camera. One of the downsides of cameras at this time in the 1900s was the size. You either had big folding cameras like the Kodak, which was a fantastic folding camera, but big, or you had a box type camera. And some of the box cameras were quite large. So coming up with something small that was portable was a big marketing uh, thing. And it was very popular as a product because you do have a range of apertures here. You don't have, you only have one um, shutter speed and you use the camera by looking down on here or some of them had, uh, but this one doesn't, you have to use it like this. You have to use it in landscape. The body on this model is brass. The later models in the 1920s were made in aluminium, so that was even lighter. They take, I think this takes a slightly strange film, if I can get it open. This takes, I think it was an E4 or E6 film, which is similar to 127, but it's not 127. And eventually these basically died out because of the 127 cameras coming in and 127 becoming more popular. But for a long time, until the late 20s, the Internetta was a very popular camera. Um, and even today, some people will load it with 35mm and just, oops, I have known people to use these with 35mm and to sort of the guesswork of how to wind on, you just cut some, um, you cut out some 35mm fill. As I said, it's, it's interesting to see the brass work here. The, uh, it's interesting to see the brass work here. I expect the aluminium ones are a lot lighter. Put the back on like so carefully, does it? Put the back on like so. To fold away the camera, you simply bring up one of the struts both struts and then just move the camera and it's amazing how it just folds 
foray in life. So quite often they had a really nice leather case which went with the camera. The, you can tell this is an early model because of the round, round enzyme motif. The later ones had an oval motif. You do find them coming up at auction. This one, you do find them coming up at auction. I have seen them at about 80 to 100 pounds. You should be able to buy one a lot cheaper because as I said before, unfortunately, you can't get the film for this camera unless you cut the film specially to fit. But as an interesting camera design and part of camera history, this little thing, I think, deserves a good place in history. Thank you for watching.